Hi, this is Michael Gregg here to discuss CompTIA's CASP certification. Now, this certification is comprised of four domains, enterprise security, risk management, policy, procedure, and legal, research and analysis, integration of computing, communications, and business disciplines. This is CompTIA's new security certification, and it's a very popular, starting off to be. Domains are 40%, 24%, 14%, and 22%. The first domain is going to cover enterprise security. We're going to expect you to understand the difference in which cryptographic tools are used for a specific situation. Also, to be able to distinguish when uh, various types of virtualization are used. And the differences really between virtualization, distributed computing, and uh, cloud computing or shared computing. Also, the security concerns of enterprise security. This one was also, um, the domain will look at application security, and they'll want you to understand in any given scenario what kind or method of tool or technique is used to conduct a security assessment or a penetration test. So there's going to be quite a few topics in this, in this domain you'll need to know. This is 40% of the score, and it covers a variety of topics things such as TCP IP. You'll need to know and have a good working understanding of TCP IP. This is IPv4, IPv6, TCP, UDP, ICMP, Network Discovery, ARP, all the various here components of the TCP IP protocol suite. You'll not only want you to understand TCP IP, but also the differences in various protocols and applications. So the differences between things such as DNS and secure DNS. This domain also will cover advanced crypto topics. So you'll need to understand in this domain pen testing, how pen testing is done, various pen testing tools, sniffers, password crackers, fuzzing tools, attack frameworks, and pen testing techniques. So in any given particular situation or assessment, is it going to be a black box test, white box, gray box? Also, what kind of tools to use? You know, Nmap, Wireshark, John the Ripper, Metasploit, these frameworks. What kind of tools are used in each specific situation and what these tools do? This, dom uh, this second domain will cover risk management, policy, procedure, and legal. You'll need to be able to analyze the security risk implications associated with business decisions, implement and execute risk mitigation strategies, explain the importance of preparing for and supporting incident response, and the role that policies and procedures play. Policies and procedures, while at administrative control, play a very, very important role in securing the organization. And we need to understand that all good security really has to be backed up by policies and procedures that the organization supports. <clears throat> now this domain is going to also look at risk. As an example, they want you to understand about risk management, the various approaches to risk, how we handle risk. Do we accept it? Do we transfer it? Do we mitigate it? So they'll want you to know not only these different ways we can deal with risk, as I said, do we accept it, but also how we prepare for and support incident response. Because, you know, it's not really a question of uh, what, uh, if bad things will happen, it's really when they happen. The bad things will happen, and an organization has to be prepared to deal with these. So you have to have a good incident response policy in place, because the idea is maybe we have to go through these things one time, but we shouldn't have to go through them again. So. They'll want you to understand about incident response, incident response processes, how we build a good uh, procedure in for this to deal with these kind of events. Forensics, they'll want you to understand different kinds of forensics, computer forensics, software analysis, malware analysis, tools like IDA Pro, how we can disassemble or decompile, and things as far as chain of custody. Chain of custody is critical when we look at uh, computer forensics because vol the volatility of the information. It's so easy to change computer information or computer data. These are some of the topics they'll expect you to know for this particular domain. Now, while not rated as much as the first domain, 
there's still a lot to cover here. Third domain is research and analysis. Research and analysis once you understand security trends and also how to carry out a relevant analysis for securing the enterprise. Now securing the enterprise requires that we really look at not only the enterprise but the you know uh, environment we operate within. So we have to know things about as far as usability, maintainability, MTTR, mean time to repair, mean time between failure, and how to balance concepts such as confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So this trade-off between CIA, that's usually referred to as the triad of security. This domain is also going to look at network traffic analysis. So if you understand Wireshark, that's really going to help. They will expect you to be able to decode and look at packets. So you'll need to be able to do some level of packet analysis and understand how these tools actually function and what they do. So the frames, what they look like as they come across the wire, the packet decode itself as we look at the various layers, and an actual decode of the uh, packet or the dump. Is it IP traffic? Is IP maybe carrying something such as ICMP? And is the ICMP maybe a ping reply? So we're looking at a ping request, ping reply. And finally, what's the packet look like itself? Is it a normal ping or someone using a tool like Loki or ICMP send? Now the fourth domain is integration of computing, communications, and business disciplines. In this fourth domain, you will be looking at items such as integrating enterprise disciplines to achieve secure solutions. Also explain the security implications of change because change happens. We have to be able to deal with change and select and distinguish the appropriate security controls with regard to communications and collaboration and explain advanced authentication techniques. Just consider how far authentication has moved beyond just usernames and passwords. So it's much more advanced than that today. 4.5 is looking that uh, the candidate be able to describe and distinguish how to carry out security activities across a technology lifecycle. In this fourth domain, you'll be looking at and examining such topics as VoIP, S-I-E-M. This is not just about capturing this logged information, it's having the ability to do what? Go back through it, look at it, analyze it, and assess this information that we've captured. NAC, Network Access Control, and also the consumerization of IT. Because in most environments today, it's much more than just, you know, uh, uh, maybe a uh, what server and laptop. Today, you very well could have to deal with iPads, tablets, you know, uh, smartphones, many different devices. And many times these devices may be hooked up or connected or used with inside the organization, even if they belong to the employee or an end client. So this whole uh, domain or this topic has changed quite a bit as far as consumerization of IT. Now, uh, another topic in this domain we'll cover, as I mentioned, VoIP. And for VoIP, they will want you to understand how communications has now become unified. We used to have a data network, we had what a voice network, now this is pretty well comprised into one. So they'll look at that, but it'll also examine change. Because as I said, change happens. Mergers and acquisitions. SDLC, the system or software development lifecycle. Dealing with emerging threats, also advanced persistent threats, and changes to authentication, such as federated ID and SAML. Those will be a couple of the other topics the exam candidate will need to know. They're going to be examining candidates or expecting candidates to have 10 years experience and at least five years of hands-on experience. So many people that have set for this exam so far or attempted the exam have rated it as a difficult test. You do have to have a broad level of knowledge, not only just you know broad level of knowledge, but actually hands-on knowledge of implementing security solutions over time. As I mentioned, five years is generally what they're looking for as far as CompTIA is looking for as far as hands-on experience. So 70 questions on the test, 
has a test time of 150 minutes. You'll have to complete it. And the score on this is pass fail only. They don't give you, you know, 70, 80, 90. It just says pass or fail when you complete the test. It's given anywhere other CompT exams are held. For more information, have a look at our site, www.thesolutionfirm.com. Also, go out and get yourself a good study guide, such as a CASP study guide. You can find that at a major bookstores, also on Amazon or your favorite online a book source, whatever that may happen to be.